So given your current context as, as a lecturer, what, what are the tips that you have for uh, the A-level grads that are looking to pursue economics as an undergrad? Yeah, so I'll focus on um, how to think about the ways that you can best succeed in your undergraduate career. If you, any economist will tell you this, especially if you plan not just to pursue economics as an undergraduate, but eventually to move on, become a professional economist, so you'll go on to graduate studies, either with a master's or a PhD, is that you really need to get to some level of comfort with math, right? So uh, in many textbooks, they will say, in the, in the preface uh, matter, they will say, okay, you have to have at least high school mathematics. Um, usually what that means is that uh, many economics majors will require you to have at least two semesters of math, usually the equivalent of a combined calculus and um, and linear algebra course. So I guess you will cover the equivalent of the further math syllabus. I, I'm not sure if further math also does linear algebra, but you would, you would definitely need uh, at least those tools uh, within um, an undergraduate degree. And then if you decided that you wanted to uh, either specialize in mathematical economics uh, or to become a professional economist, you also need to take additional courses. So this will be necessary for you to even get entry into graduate school. You'll need um, usually multivariable calculus. You'll be much better if you have a first proofs course uh, or real analysis, for instance. Um, so, so those are examples, you, you would need like a bundle of math classes, right? Like four or five uh, courses in math to to make your, round off your undergraduate degree and, and, and also even as you are taking your economics classes to reach a certain level of comfort so that you're not focusing just on solving the math, uh, but also trying to understand the economics that underlies the math. And so I cannot emphasize how important that is. To be quite honest, I found statistics to be um, the easiest part of mathematics in the oh, sense okay. that, in the sense that um, it's, it does require you to understand certain statistical tools and concepts and principles. Uh, but a lot of statistics is about interpretation, at least uh, unless you are you are studying the proofs, you know, you're studying statistics, mathematical statistics at the high level, and then you'll be doing the proofs that underlies a lot of you know, the so-called you know, t-test or the f-test or various other statistical tests that you are that you apply. Rather, in, in economics, a lot of it is applied statistics. So you will need to understand what a t-test does, applicability, and, and what uh, what the Gauss-Markov or or central limit theorem implies. And then once you understand the concept, um, you would. Then be, your, your main goal then is to interpret what the statistics say. So to understand what a statistically significant um, coefficient in a regression equation, um, I'm using a lot of technical terms there. So, so to understand um, when, when a particular factor, let's say you are interested in the phenomena of economic growth and you want to know to what extent uh, does education play a part in economic growth, um, you would run what's called a regression, which relates yep. uh, the relationship between economic growth and education. And you want to see whether um, the estimated effect of human capital in, or, or, or education in this case uh, is um, just due to you know, has no effect because it's due to chance or actually it is difficult to attribute uh, this effect to chance.